So, is everything maybe working? I hope so. Hi again to all the stream watchers. Uh, sorry about the delay uh, after a bit of uh, airplane excitement and, and delays. We are now here with Anton from Wargaming. Really good to have you here. Uh, Anton's been working there as an art, art director, if yeah, I understand correctly. I'm and uh, but as we're all late, I think we'll just give you the floor. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Antonio Paring. I'm our director in War Gaming uh, in St. Petersburg. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to say a couple of words about myself. I started working uh, in game industry almost 20 years ago. Before that, I worked in studio, uh, involved in CG production, and we made, uh, it was uh, early in the 90s, uh, we, we made commercials, short animations, cinematic for games, and other stuff. Uh, it was uh, one of the best uh, studio by that time in Russia. Uh, now, uh, after they work in the studio, I work uh, with the game production, and I was involved in work of ten projects uh, in different genres and uh, various platforms, PlayStations, different consoles, uh, even the Nintendo dual screen. Uh, uh, now I'm an uh, director of World of Warships uh, in Wargaming in St. Pe Petersburg. Uh, what the World of Warships uh, begins? Uh, when Wargaming, uh, Wargaming had released uh, World of Tanks and achieved its great success, uh, it was obvious the players wanted to uh, extension of the military historic uh, franchise and Wargaming started to look uh, for a team uh, who, who could develop other parts of franchise. Uh, therefore, uh, Wargaming launched uh, a new project in Leicester Studio in St. Petersburg. And this studio had a rich experience in military historic games. Uh, what is the World of Warships? World of Warships is really, oops, it's different, let's, sorry. <laughs> uh, World of Warships is the latest wargaming large scale MMO. The project had been in development uh, about four years, I guess, and we launched uh, its release more than a year ago, and we are doing well now. Our development team consists of around 200 people, uh, and like with <coughs> the other Wargaming titles, there are 16 officers around the world in Wargaming who contribute uh, to the success. To the success, and if we count everybody involved uh, to work on the project, uh, it was about uh, 400 people. Uh, well, what I want to talk about yes, uh, when I started thinking about, think about my talk, I wondered what was the most important question I should about that I should answer. What useful experience I can share? Uh, just to describe a production of our pr current project, the goals, focus, and problems and issues, it's uh, pipeline, uh, it seemed to me an approach too narrow. Each studio, each team has own problems, own goals, own pipeline, and uh, each individual experience uh, is useful only in part. Okay, uh, here's the, here are these guys, they have their problems, they have their project, and they doing 
they act the following way. Uh, I'll try to touch important aspects of art in game production, in my opinion. Uh, they are important uh, on the way of game production, from creation of idea to implementation, uh, development, and support the project. Game art's uh, main characteristics uh, what do you need to focus on? I believe main characteristics are aesthetics and functiona functionality. Uh, if these two characteristics are done well, the art of the game is great. Uh, you can more or name more aspects like unique art style, quality, detailed content, etc. But all uh, they are all they are all subject to the first two. Aesthetics makes game charming and appealing, brings passion to the players. And clear functionality makes game addictive and keeps players passion. About aesthetics, uh, I'd like to point aesthetics major components. Idea with emotional pillars and art aspiration. A composition with uh, shapes, lights and camera, colors and details. Usually, when I'm starting to think, think about creation of new game, I try to find emotional pillars uh, of new game world. When we make a game, the main goal is to build a new specific ex player's experience, uh, emotional experience. I'm trying to find exciting and clear symbols. They also have to be familiar to build right uh, artistic language. Uh, uh, I can name uh, you as an example many good games where the emotional pillars are marked clearly. Uh, these games have definitely unique uh, feeling and experience. You can easily investigate such examples. Uh, just ask yourself or somebody else to describe the game uh, with a couple of words and you will see uh, that different people will find unique similar characteristics. Uh, for example, Destiny is fantasy, sci-fi, hopeful, heroic, dynamic, genre is romantic, hopeful, moving, warm. Uh, Far Cry is dangerous, mystical, sacred, and real. Uh, we can continue more and more. Uh, about World of Warships, what we expected from the game about naval battles. Uh, highest quality in worship games, realism, beauty, atmosphere, and attention to detail, and of course, fairness and balance. Here are the World of Warships pillars. Wide scale. World of Warships is a universe of large scale naval battles that uh, take place in various corners of the earth. Uh, users can act freely according to specific combat conditions on diverse and innovative maps. Metal. Obviously, in the, met, uh, in the game, megatons of steel become a fearful fleet of battleships combining unique firepower, speed, and technical peculiarity. Solid. Uh, ships possess high endurance. They are able to set a course for the most uh, turbulent waves and throughout any continent. The word solid describes game climbing. We are seriously, seriously in this for the long haul. Heavy. Compared to tanks or warplanes, battleships are much heavier. This description emphasizes not only uh, physical mass of the ships, but the titanic scale of naval battles. Uh, heavy is profound, fundamental, exceptional, and even aesthetic. Stunning. Naval battle uh, are explosive, extremely powerful, and loud actions. They require reaction and strategic thinking. Uh, they can overwhelm you. Military. World of Warships is a military game that, that comes with the notions of strategy, discipline, and order. We respect people who love military and naval history. In this regard, in development rests on military expense experience. Gritty. World of Warships embraces all aspects of high seas struggles while submerging players in the deep waters of naval battles. Find major pillars, keep 
uh, find major pillars, keep focus on them and spread them on everything or even the tiny detail of the project. Every original uh, aesthetics comes uh, from passion and experience of creators. Uh, they desire curiosity or excitement. Sometimes is enough or just uh, to, to have just one idea or one point or symbol to inspire the creation of new aesthetics. For example, aesthetics of uh, the Monument Valley has come from Asher Growings and aesthetics of Pori, and the Blind Forest has come from Miyazaki's animation. World of Worship's art inspiration comes from world, world documentaries, uh, magnificent nature of the ocean, uh, big, uh, huge warships itself, uh, war movies, and of course, uh, paintings of great artists uh, like Anna Ivan Azovsky or Laura Mae Gray. But composition. Art, like any creation in general, it's a hierarchy of more and less important details. Composition is the most important of the structure basics for an image of a film or a game. Properly set composition creates integrity of a work and allows to build uh, the hierarchy that focuses player attention to the main aspects of the game. You can organize composition with shapes and light only. Here's great examples of building the game space, uh, only really lights and shapes. Here is a really important uh, aspect. Uh, works of uh, foreground, middle distance, and backgrounds in one scene. Uh, pools of light and contrast lighting. Dark on light and light on dark. If you make a story or working with a, uh, special frames and if you want to uh, make an accent to exact moment, <coughs> you can incredibly strengthen the dramatic effects of working with camera. Here is an example uh, in XCOM and uh, action camera in XCOM brought a lot of uh, immersion in the gameplay process. In the dynamic 3D games with the first and fir third person view camera, is, uh, uh, the camera is almost free while it doesn't not, uh, not lose its significance. You can always focus the player uh, on important details. In World of Warships, we implemented several types of game camera to get deeper player's immersion. First of all, it's uh, camera uh, just right on the turret on the battleships and airplane cameras, tactical cameras, and shell cameras when player can uh, look how the shells are targeted to the target. <laughs> In the same manner, compositional structure should be used to build uh, environment in the game, to create beautiful scenarios in the game. We should remember that in a game, each art component, including its composition, uh, should contribute to its functionality as well. Uh, here's an example of two almost similar games uh, with different field of view. On the right screenshot, a tank looks more massive. It's good for feeling a tank as a heavy machine. Uh, on left screen, the tank looks less massive, but its camera more useful uh, for active playing. Color. Color is a very important and powerful uh, factor establishing aesthetics of the game. I think it's highly important and necessary uh, for the game to define the main palette uh, and color scheme uh, of the project. It's great if the message is clear from day one but, and you succeed to handle it earlier in development. Nevertheless, sometimes uh, it takes a few iterations to find the right solution out 
and you have to adjust uh, it in a process of development. Uh, Palette is not just an artistic aspect, but it is also a powerful tool uh, that works for functionality. The tool which allows to provide the player with a clear picture of the game world. I think one of the best examples of using Palette as a system to create clear world is the Shangri-La in Far Cry 4 with only four main colors to describe whole world. Red is life, uh, gold as sacred and interactive objects, white as innocence objects, and blue as a call of death and evil. In the world of warships, uh, we use the basic palette supporting the emotional characteristic of the game. There are the colors of the sea, uh, aquamarine, azure, blue, uh, colors of steel, navy gray, blue gray, uh, colors of the flame and sparks. A simplified palette or limited palette is another very useful method. It can be a solution for a clear statement of your aesthetics. Uh, I, I can name many different projects to illustrate this. This is all Firewatch. Johnny uh, also be hot. Uh, one more useful tool is color script. It's an additional helpful way to create the right emotional movement in the game uh, and to strengthen the narr narrative structure. Uh, at current time, we don't, in our project, we don't have a narrative line. Uh, but we use the color charts just to be sure that our colors variety is rich enough, uh, all colors fit to the uh, main game colors palette. Wolves, oh, World of Warships is a realistic world and historical authenticity of the ships is crucial for our project. We need quality details on create to create authenticity. We do a lot of research on how warships really look and move uh, we use blueprints, cooperate with museums, historical experts, etc. Uh, uh, when I say about details, I mean not only detailed models and textures, I mean quality details for crucial feature of the project. It can be animation, for example, as in the aura and the blind forest of physics like in Cut and Drop. Uh, look at the aura and the blind forest. Uh, I talk about it again because I really like art of this game. Uh, the developers from the Moon Studio uh, made a special research and combined sprite and engine deformation animations to achieve effect of smooth animation exactly like in Miyazaki's animate, animate movies. Uh, that is why I put animation and visual effects in this section. Of course, it's impossible to make uh, a game uh, with the same level of details everywhere. We always have some boundaries. We need to keep focus on the most important points of, the pro of our project. In our case, it's the ships. Uh, nevertheless, an artist creating the game always has the freedom to set the desired level of details in particular point of the game. If you will succeed, uh, the player sees the world that the artist had in mind. Many details are not always necessary, as the player's imagination will build the world of the game. Here's one more great example uh, of use uh, of ideal level of details. Uh, it's works of uh, one of my favorite game artists and art director, Rob Ruppel. His works with almost pure geometrical details uh, looks gorgeous and gives uh, absolutely realistic look. Oops. Okay, we are moving to part two. <laughs> uh, Oh, 
will support functionality. Uh, next uh, major point. By functionality, I understand the clarity of, deliver of delivery of the main game idea and game mechanics to players. Uh, clarity of the game system. Whatever style you choose, you of your project, realistic, cartoon style, painting, minimalist or high tech, first of all, the art should help the players uh, to understand the world of the game precisely. Uh, I can call it design driven art. Uh, design is a key component anyway. I think the best example of, of such art is Minecraft. Uh, could be art itself a root uh, of uh, the success if the game system is weak? I think uh, no. However, it's as if aesthetics alone become a, the, ba the basis of original design, uh, you will have art driven design. In this way, uh, uh, this way, in this case, game can be successful. Some types of games have uh, s g game systems uh, that intu intuitively clear for the player. Uh, kind of physics-based game or sport or racing games. In the if the game has complex system uh, that unfamiliar to the players, we have to make efforts to make system clear. Uh, we have several ways to explain game mechanics to the players. Interface, of course. Uh, clear visual code where shapes and colors work for game mechanics uh, and native uh, and clear visual feedback uh, it can replace part of complex interfaces uh, all that happens with the battleship and the world of warships has visual feedback via effects of visual models and textures Here, here's another small example illustrating uh, the importance of good functionality of one of the projects uh, on which I have worked once. Uh, uh, the first version of the game was originally released on PSN and mobile, and new version was released on mobile and Steam. Uh, look at the right image. Here's a beautiful large picture, but <laughs> Actually, now we can't <laughs> see it. <laughs> um, but uh, on the phone screens, it's not so clear like a previous version, but it's still a good game anyway. There are some more examples of good implementation of clarity revere art in the games. Uh, super hot. Uh, it's obviously here. Uh, absolute art is absolutely fun functional. There are colors. Uh, Hearthstone, cards and packs, here are physical, clear, look familiar uh, as in real CCG, uh, they have nothing needless. Uh, Offer trading company, uh, objects on the field uh, have clear visual differences. Um, Clash Royale, the all parts of art uh, are, quite, are quite functional and polytopia. Uh, where the any detail keeps easy readable information. I've spoken to many colleagues from the industry, producers, designers, and art directors, and many of them emphasized aesthetics and cl the clarity of the visual component. Uh, often they describe that uh, in their own words, but uh, the core of an idea didn't change. Functionality is the feature that is not clearly noticed by players. If you ask players what they like they in the game, they will respond, it's pleasant, it's nice looking, uh, it has good art style, beautiful details, but not the functionality. When art creates a clear picture in the game, uh, it, it is perceived naturally and clearly. Emotional engagement is essential. But if there is no clarity, the player will feel that the uh, game rules is a, are, are, nat are unnatural and that can irritate him. Uh, next point is... Okay, let's have 
Arch. Obviously, making concepts is a necessary stage in the game production. Uh, we already have a high level concept ID and concept art gives us exact vision of how project will look. Uh, it's important uh, in big project with big scope and big team. As we have, uh, as we have been making a re realistic world in World of Warships, we try to use mainly realistic references. Uh, However, concept art is essential in those cases where one uh, has to create something specific or unusual. This is an example of a uh, Halloween mod from our last year. Just some additional art. In several cases, concept art is not only helps to make production easier, but also encura encourages uh, for the artists to gradually improve their artistic skills. At first we used uh, uh, a good example is an uh, uh, environment artist in our studio. At first we used uh, common and detailed uh, asset concepts for the production and they necessary for the artist to understand the structure, the elements uh, and the character of location. We did a lot of production sketches, but gradually when the artist mastered uh, the work methods and gained some experience, uh, they started to want to uh, get more creative space in their work. And we switched to one main concept sketch. Uh, point about production, uh, I tell about team. As I mentioned before, when our studio started development of World of Warships, initial team consisted of about uh, 35 people. It was very exciting and motivating for everyone because it was a great opportunity uh, to make something big and, mean and meaningful. And the team had true passion to make this game. Uh, so development started. Uh, in the early stage of development, uh, when team was small, we had pretty re regular structure for the small team engineers, artists, designers, QA. Uh, that was all we needed to deliver projects that we worked on it in the past, and it worked well. However, the scope of uh, wo World of Warships was extremely large, and uh, from day one, day by day, we needed to grow to bring more people on board. Uh, in a small team, every new person brings, brings more opportunities uh, to do more for development. We were happy. It looked easy and cool. Uh, we could hire more people and make more features, more code, more tools, more content. Uh, and we could make best project ever. It was, it's great. Uh, with more and more different specific things we needed to, to do, we started to implement a lot of specialization. Engineers got split into technology and games engineers with different specializations inside the team. Render, client core, uh, server core tools, UI, game logic, all other departments, uh, artists, designers, QA got split as well. It was more suitable to do specific things, but it brought more isolation uh, of work areas in the development team. At first, people were very happy. They don't need uh, to work on some random things anymore. They could really concentrate on what they do best. As we move further, we need to more people to solve new different issues. It seems to, uh, the best way seemed to be the best way to hire more people. Uh, the team became bigger, the structure became more complex, but despite it, uh, we were uh, flooded with problems uh, that we encountered with every new milestone. In some moment, production and whole project uh, has begun to suffer uh, really hard. 
The planning became tremendously difficult. Deliveries started to suffer and predictability decreased uh, greatly due to complexity. Uh, productivity decreased drastically. We needed to make really big efforts to keep uh, effective communication. Team leads spent a great amount of time trying to coordinate tons of dependencies, uh, communicate between departments, etc. Uh, they didn't have time to do actual work with teams. Uh, the am amount of people involved in production of each feature increased drastically. There is an uh, workflow uh, of production uh, quite small uh, feature in the in-game chat. There is a tons of dependencies. Uh, in our case, we operate uh, with at least three versions at the same time, life stabilization and development. And image Imagine what happens when we have a 30, 40 features in development at the same time with three versions in operations. Big team is good because you may do a lot of stuff simultaneously, but uh, if a project structure doesn't work well, the production is going to turn into chaos. And what was much worse, the amount of team leads and managers involved uh, in it could be twice bigger as the developers. At this critical point, uh, our PM and team lead started an investigation and found that we needed to change not only a structure and processes, we needed to change the whole approach to production. We needed to change the way how people uh, were involved to work, the way how people communicate each other. We needed to bring back the passion. We started the pilot. Uh, we started the pilot. We took the most spread discipline across the team, the UI, uh, identified everybody who was involved into making UI la related work across the studio, and united them in the one single feature team. Uh, this team had one lead, one goal, and one plan and wo all people were relocated into one room physically. There were a UI guy uh, who was lead, uh, a designer, an artist, QA guy, an engineer. They could work simultaneously. They uh, could talk each other. They, know all, all they, they all knew about design decision, uh, about problem issues, and as a result, communication problems were almost gone. Here's an example of workflow, the same feature in a feature team. And as a result, uh, uh, a few people were involved uh, in production of this feature. This reorganization removed most of the bad things that we had suffered. Feature team worked much more effectively. Uh, greatly improved the cycle time of the test features. A lot of unnecessary communication were removed. A large time was wasters were eliminated. Productivity increased by a huge margin. And at this time, the majority uh, are developers and feature team. No more design departments, engineer departments. Uh, all teams have their dedicated person uh, of main functions. Each team owns their feature. Works, w work is very well isolated. Teams have everything uh, they need to do their part of the job. Motivation has increased, increased high, highly. People could better understand goals and results of their work. They could see their contribution to the success of whole project. Responsibility increased too, because the results became more transparent. If I don't do my part, the team won't make a good feature, and feature won't be delivered to the players. People started learning better because they needed, needed to solve more different issues, and they could share their, their knowledge more effectively. 
couple what about passion. A friend of mine, producer from one big company in Germany, stated that a very important characteristic of a game is a made with love. I think I call it passion, and I believe we can clearly see projects that have been made with the passion. Uh, you just can feel the passion in the game, like uh, I don't know Overwatch, for example. I believe World of Warships has that passion too. Well, in context of my talk, uh, the most important takeaway of this part that engagement or passion are more more Im important than the process. Uh, find a way uh, to involve your people in the project, and they'll sh they will surprise you. Uh, finding the right technology is vital for the development of the project. World of Warships is developed with uh, big world engine. Uh, world of Tanks project has been created uh, on the same engine, and we inherit it. We have made many modifications to optimize uh, it for our goals of our projects. Engines and technologies are evolving with the projects. The screenshots uh, show the progress of visual <laughs> of technologies in the engine. From uh, first year of years of development more and more to the current state. Game slicks now like this. Sometimes optimal solution looks old school and primitive, but in the certain situation, situation it brings good result. Uh, for example, we started using uh, a landscape on based on 3D models instead of engine terrain, uh, which was initial in, in the engine. Uh, this tech allowed us to improve performance and visual quality. The ideas for changes come not only from our needs and desires, but also from information on what is happening in the industry. Be informed about advanced technologies in the industry. Uh, learn what others do. It's extremely important because even a small hint uh, can bring an idea of a big change. For example, just the article about the motion vectors uh, allowed us to create and implement a really cool tech uh, in the visual effects, this tech gives us unlimited possibilities to make effects smoother. Uh, another example, uh, I was playing uh, The Last of Us once and I was wondered uh, how they did the moving sky. Uh, we have investigated and made our own system. If you are going to make a project in a short period of time, it's important to use technology suitable to your requir requirements uh, with good tool set. Luckily, today we have uh, many engines and tools to make the development uh, much friendlier. Life creations. Your gaming titles are based on an uh, assumption that the lifetime of players in our games is very, very long, months and months and preferably years. And that means that there is a strong need to update the game effectively and keep our players engaged and provide high quality service. How the players themselves generate the basis of dynamic bat gameplay battles. Uh, they still want new content, new ships and new maps. Uh, the production is set up set up smoothly and we can produce a lot of content and upload update by update. Uh, nevertheless, at a certain point, our attention uh, started to decline. We tried to figure out uh, what the matter was and found out that stability and quality of updates were crucial factors. Uh, we have improved quality of, the of updates. We have reduced the size of our the updates and product sites. Uh, sometimes we have to refuse to deliver ready-made content. 
we have succeeded to switch uh, to a three week cycle of updates and the players got stable ante anticipation of versions. So today, some versions are bug fixes only. Thus, we were able to fix and improve the situation. Also, in addition to particular updates, uh, we have introduced time events that allows to attack players' interest without adding more ga big game content. Game events, uh, campaigns, rank and seasons, etc. It's always seasonal activities. There is one very unpleasant side in the game industry. Uh, the market is flooded. Uh, uh, a huge number of games <coughs> is released every day. However, I do believe that uh, original ideas can be successful and great art can help them to succeed. In general, each artist should be ready <laughs> to be the only person who will be interested in his creative work. Uh, but uh, do not despair. Uh, you should creative create without focusing on the market conditions. You should be only guided by your inner sense of creativity. Never stop creating. Thank you. Uh, I can show uh, a lot of uh, as, no, a few videos that illustrates my parts of my words. Uh, uh, There's that system of uh, motion vectors that uh, allows to play uh, effects with any speed as we want. You can see there two frames per second with the same textures, but uh, effective motion vector technology uh, plays smoothly, independent on uh, frames per, per second. It's just technical video is now technology of moving skies. We're based on idea of Naughty Dogs, but uh, we made our own system. This video illustrates the prototype of weather in our game. Uh, and any new technology feature, we are making the prototype 
fast prototype first and after we can check the performance and visual quality and after only after that we uh, decided to implement uh, this technology in the game or not. looks pretty gray because it's bad weather condition. Is it different cameras, tactical camera? Or airplane camera? has a full control of uh, uh, ships and planes and other no, no snow Here is an effect of full screen fire uh, that helps uh, the player to indicate the fire of uh, uh, own ship. Uh, player uh, not always can see their own ship, uh, but this is part of uh, natural effect <laughs> for player. My presentation has taken not uh, much time, <laughs> but <laughs> if you have a questions. I can think of good questions while we're testing this again. I think we can hear something. Yes. So, who would like to go first? Come on. <laughs> While we're waiting, uh, I would like to ask that uh, mm -hmm. I think um, they just uh, you just started a studio in Helsinki, didn't you? Yeah. Have you, have you heard of that one? <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, a big it's company, but. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, actually, it's a recent news. I heard it two days ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, this was, uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. games now, right? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Wargaming comes to Helsinki and yeah. it's here. <laughs> But yeah. you're not working on the mobile stuff so much, are you? Uh, uh, personally, I'm not, but in our studio, we are making two mobile prototypes on different games. Uh, uh, but they are uh, still in early stage okay. development. Uh, I guess a uh, studio here in Helsinki will uh, make some mobile <laughs> games. Yeah, yeah, that's, I guess. What I, that's what I heard. Seems to be the general thing happening around here. <laughs> yeah. So, anybody else? Yep. I had one question about the like reorganizing the whole way you work. Because mm -hmm. you used to have like twice as many managers as developers, then it flipped the w other way around, so you had twice as many developers or managers. So, were these people as managers like developers that were pushed into management like situations, or did you have this problem that you had way more managers than you needed suddenly, or how do you manage around that? Uh. <laughs> Try to <laughs> formulate. Uh. Actually, our managers in, in our team, not exact managers, they are all, all the team leads who make or 
uh, itself, yeah. work with the teams, and uh, it f in the first situation, uh, uh, the part of uh, manager's work, like uh, just managing some complex things, was a great amount. Uh, and in the second uh, uh, case, uh, they uh, they can work itself, okay. and, and <laughs> most of managers uh, actually managers uh, became just developers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. you feed people to yeah. do what they wanted yeah, to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. Uh, you mentioned using uh, different tools like color palettes and other things to enhance the aesthetics of the games. Uh, how do you balance that conflict? And if you have like people with disabilities, like color blindness and other things, to how do you use the full? Uh, set of tools available level without making it just looking nice so someone can't play it, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when we started uh, the development, we, we, oh, we didn't think about uh, people with uh, color uh, blind. Uh, and we just created a game, with, uh, we organized the palette, uh, they choose uh, our colors and tried to do uh, project with these colors, uh, but uh, I guess in half year, half a year ago, uh, we implemented the special mods in the game uh, for color blind people and with the different ones, and they can use uh, all palette uh, uh, was was changed uh, in this mod. All, all palette uh, changed uh, in special way. Uh, for the people uh, with uh, color blind. We just implemented <laughs> these this mods in the game. Hello. Hello. And uh, thanks for the presentation. It looks very interesting game. Uh, did I understood right that it's it's like a mobile, I mean, multiplayer online battler in a game, MOBA? Uh, I don't <laughs> exactly um, understand. Uh, the game, the, is, it, is it a multiplayer online battle arena game? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Absolutely. So I, I was thinking that uh, because you have been uh, in the development of many games, so from the, like the director point of view, how is the MOBA game development different from uh, 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 some, some uh, single player or single player PC game, console yeah. game? Uh, I think the uh, for mobile games, uh, function functionality of art is also uh, it's most important, I guess, uh, and maybe bright uh, by bright style and in art style, for me is the, the second <laughs> take a second place after functionality. Uh, it's, it's Uh, if you make a mobile game, uh, you have to focus more focus more on the clear uh, visual language. Uh, 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 maybe I don't answer. <laughs> I see I don't <laughs> answer the question, but. Yeah, I was like thinking that uh, if if you make a game like uh, like some single player PC game, a big game, uh, that I, I that don't <laughs> you know, if you're making a PC game for a single player uh -huh. or like a local multiplayer, comparing yeah. to this uh, MOBA game, mm. how is like a, what are the main characteristics, uh, main differences on the mm -hmm. on the development? How it's like different organization structure or, or the workflow or something like this. Uh, you ask about uh, art itself or st st work structure or something? Uh, well, well uh, also in the art, but like in, art. in the company yeah. overall. Not only in the art, but you know, uh, because uh -huh. you've been working in different projects, maybe you have some uh, some. Uh, I think uh, I think ideas. the process is uh, quite similar, but uh, if you make an MMO games, uh, online games, 
uh, you just need to put more efforts to uh, doing more efforts to life operation stage because you are wh when you are uh, launch the games the, the game uh, it's only the beginning you you have to do more and more after the launch uh, launch the game and if you make a, a, a single uh, or no, game or game with local multiplayer it's not so big part uh, uh, life <laughs> game after the release uh, about uh, structure of team uh, I think it's the the same hello uh, yeah. you mentioned uh, quite a lot the difference between uh, functionality and art as mm -hmm. art in a way uh, something that is qu that was quite challenging for you to develop to make it both functional and beautiful in this game. Something that was a real challenge for you uh -huh. as a designer. Uh, uh, a big challenge was the uh, in World of Warships we have a r r quite complex uh, game mechanics, and it was a uh, hard to bring uh, the player uh, to give the player uh, useful I don't know tools in the game uh, and for playing uh, and another challenge I guess it was uh, I think the I think the explaining game mechanics to the player bring uh, bring it in the game it was a main main challenge uh, in the art another I don't know in <laughs> in, in our game uh, beauty uh, doesn't uh, conflict with the functionality <laughs> actually Hello, thank you for the uh, presentation. I have a question about like consistency of the art direction. Uh, for example, like I guess your audience is really into like uh, like military history and stuff. And then, for example, when you release the Halloween Halloween patch with those mm -hmm. fantastic uh, ships, how do the audience take it, or is it like? Uh, but where do you decide what is like too much, and where, where do you decide like this is like no? Mm -hmm. This this kind of break the immersion of for our players who who want to like experience the mili the, the battles on the ship like with the r real ship and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, events such as uh, Halloween or something when we make some uh, different mods, some fantastic mods. Uh, actually, uh, our our audience. Uh, uh, take uh, with, I don't know, with uh, our audience are <laughs> glad to see the, these different modes. Uh, uh, despite the most of audiences, the people who love the military history, etc., some uh, aged, <laughs> boring guys, <laughs> I don't know, uh, they have fun with uh, uh, such different events because it's time and they take it with love. <laughs> you know, they, they they like it a lot. Such such events uh, and here is for developers. Here is a great uh, opportunity to make some crazy stuff because uh, a lot of people in the team uh, who makes uh, ships and uh, the same again the metal ships again uh, the metal <laughs> okay again and w when people are uh, doing some different uh, crazy stuff they are just enjoy it for the process uh, and th th this is good thi thing uh, this is good thing for developers and for audience thank you All right, any more? Okay, well, I guess we're already a bit over time, so maybe it's good.
good to stop here, but thanks once more for coming over. So, <laughs> big hands. Thank you. And uh, as usual, uh, those of you who are physically here, welcome to have a coffee and continue chatting. It was nice that we could chat already a bit before the lecture, even though, of course, we're sorry about the delay in general. But happy we got Anton here in, in one piece and then still managed to get the lecture and a bit of QA. Uh, the next uh, lecture of Games Now will be on the 16th of January. So this was the last uh, before the Christmas break, but we'll continue in January with uh, new ideas and new speakers. Thanks. All right.